you begin life as an egg, and already the odds are stacked against you. You are microscopic, invisible, a speck floating in muddy puddles or clinging to a damp leaf. No one will ever notice you. No one will ever care. You have no parents to guard you, no siblings to protect you. You are nothing but a fragile capsule, waiting for something out there to eat you. If nothing swallows you, you'll just decay and disappear. Gone without a trace. No memory. No existence. But if you're lucky, or unlucky, depending on how you look at it, you're eaten by something else. Maybe it's a mosquito larva twitching around in the water. Maybe it's a mayfly baby. Either way, you're swallowed whole and you hitch a ride inside its body. And here's the sick twist. That's not even the creature you're meant for. It's just your shuttle bus, your taxi ride. You curl up, survive, and wait because you need something bigger to eat this thing. Maybe a cricket, maybe a grasshopper, maybe even a mantis. When that happens, you transfer again. You pass from one stomach to another, invisible, hidden, unstoppable. Now you've arrived in your true home, a grasshopper, a cricket, something with legs, wings, and a nervous system you're about to hijack. This insect is alive, free, hopping through grass, eating leaves, looking for mates. It has no idea that its entire life has already been sold to you. Inside its body, you are a worm, but not just any worm. You're a thread, a filament, a strand of living hair. You grow and grow and grow. You twist through organs, slide around fat, nestle in cavities, and you don't stop. Some horsehair worms stretch over a foot long inside an insect barely the size of your thumb. Imagine hiding a rope in a shoebox. That's you inside their body, coiled, knotted, waiting. And you are not a quiet guest. You feed off your host, stealing its nutrients. Every bite of leaf the cricket takes, every drop of energy it uses, you skim your share. You don't rip holes or tear organs apart. That would be too obvious. No, you're patient. You let them live their life, all while you expand inside like a shadow. The insect never knows you're there until you decide it's time. And this is where the nightmare begins. You don't just live inside the body, you live inside the mind. You don't have a brain of your own, like a human does, but you don't need one. You've evolved something far more terrifying, the ability to rewire someone else's brain. You slip invisible chemical signals into their nervous system, you flip their instincts, you override millions of years of evolution. A cricket that once feared water suddenly feels drawn to it. A grasshopper that should avoid puddles at all costs starts creeping toward them. Imagine being terrified of drowning your entire life, then waking up one morning with an overwhelming desire to jump into a lake. That's what you do to your host. You're not whispering suggestions, you are rewriting desire itself. The insect doesn't understand. It doesn't know why its legs carry it to the edge of the pond, why its wings twitch toward the shimmer of water, why its body hurls itself into a place that means certain death. To the insect, it feels like instinct. But in truth, it's suicide, programmed by you. And then comes the moment everyone who has seen this in real life remembers. The insect leaps into the water. It thrashes. It drowns. And then you come out. You erupt from its body like a strand of living wire, coiled and wriggling. People who see it for the first time often think it looks like something from a horror movie. A thin, hair-like worm sliding out of the drowning insect, sometimes longer than the insect itself by tenfold. It looks impossible, like a magician pulling a scarf endlessly out of a hat. But this isn't magic. It's your birth into the open world. And it's your host's execution. The insect almost always dies. Drowned, exhausted, abandoned. You've used it, hollowed it, steered it straight into oblivion. That cricket's entire life, every hop, every meal, every beat of its wings was only to deliver you here. Its purpose was never its own. It was your slave from the moment you swallowed you. Now, for the first time, you are free. 
You wriggle in the water, impossibly thin, impossibly long, gliding like a strand of black thread that has come alive. Your goal is singular. Find another worm, mate, and release thousands of eggs in the water, starting the cycle again. And then, your short taste of freedom ends. You die. Your life is over. And that's it. That's the entire arc of your existence. Born as an egg no one cares about, swallowed by accident, hidden in the body of another creature, growing in secret, rewiring minds, forcing your host to suicide, escaping into the water, only to repeat the process, then die. But here's where it gets worse. The risks are endless. If the insect that swallows your first host gets eaten by a bird, you die. If the puddle you need dries up, you die. If the host dies before you can control it, you die. If no one swallows your egg in the first place, you die. Your whole species exists on a razor's edge of chance and manipulation. And here's the shocking part most people don't know. You don't just hijack simple reflexes. You control complex behavior. Some hosts climb higher, some move at certain times of day, some even change their natural fears and desires entirely, all because of you. Imagine if something inside your own body rewired you to crave jumping into traffic. That's what you are. You're not a worm. You're a puppeteer of death. And people have seen this in real life. Videos exist of crickets plunging into water only for a worm to unravel from their corpses like a nightmare ribbon. People scream, gag, or stare in disbelief because it looks like something alien. It looks like something that should not exist on Earth, but it does, and it's everywhere. So why does it suck to be born as a horsehair worm? Because your life is a gamble of being swallowed. Because you spend your entire existence coiled inside someone else's body. Because your only path to survival is to commit psychological warfare on another creature and drive it to suicide. Because you are fragile, accidental, and dependent on horror to continue. You don't get joy. You don't get choice. You don't get freedom. Your entire existence is parasitic cruelty written into your DNA. You are born in darkness, live in darkness, and crawl into the light only when it's time to kill. And then you vanish again, leaving nothing but drowned corpses and eggs that will repeat the cycle. That's the reality of being a horsehair worm, a thread of life that survives only by ending others. A hair that grows in secret until it forces its host to die. A parasite that proves nature doesn't need monsters because it already made one. And if you think this is disturbing, remember, this isn't some rare alien creature. This is happening in puddles, ponds, and streams near you, right now. And the next cricket you hear chirping in the grass, it might already be carrying a horsehair worm whispering in its brain, waiting for the perfect moment to drag it into the water.